Well, this is an early edition of Feature Friday, and it was, it's in fact Thursday. Uh, today, we released the fourth release of 2025, so we call this version 1.195. Um, and there's a lot in it, right? So you'll see it from the What's New forum posting here. There's, there's a lot of great stuff f uh, across the board. But there's something that I want to focus on because it's really, really new and probably unexpected. And it's this thing called the constrained surface. Um, so I want to start with that and show you a couple of workflows and, and how good that is. Um, so I'm going to start with something re really simple here. Firstly, the constraint surface is under the surfacing tools here. You'll see offset surface, boundary, fill, and all those other things. And then this new guy, right, the constraint surface. So a constraint surface takes a series of points that are the constraints that a surface will be fit through. And it only takes a minimum of three uh, to create a surface, of course, uh, and that's going to be a plane. And there's a number of options in here that we will get to. Uh, you know, things like uh, tolerance and performance uh, versus smoothness and all these other things. But the really exciting and fun stuff starts when you choose more than four, po uh, more than three points, sorry. So let's choose this one down the bottom. Ooh, all right, that's interesting. And if we keep selecting points, you'll see instantly the surface is, uh, is created so that it is constrained, as the name suggests, uh, by those points. Um, there are some additional constraints that you can put in as well. Uh, so if you look at this over here, you can see I can put a normal uh, to define the normal of what the surface will be at that point. So I'm going to choose, choose that top surface for that. And then maybe for these two down the bottom, um, I'm going to choose, you know, you can use it in many different ways of, of defining a normal. It could be a face. Uh, it could be uh, an edge uh, like this. We could use an edge or a mate connector or something else like that. And you can see as we define extra constraints, um, the surface is going to be put in there. And it doesn't require you to create a, any boundaries because it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't need any boundaries. It just creates what it needs to to go through there. So if I hide that part that I was using just as reference, you'll see that it actually creates a really nice quality surface. It's a degree three uh, multi-segment surface. Um, and if we have a look at it in uh, maybe in this mode here, where I use a, a nice shortcut for uh, the zebra stripes, um, it's very smooth, right? But it's not, it's not designed to be sort of a class A modeling uh, tool here. It's designed to take points and rapidly, um, you know, whether they're digitized from uh, vertices or other points in a sketch, or as we'll get to in a minute, scans and create a nice surface through that. Now, it's a surface that's, it's a, it's a nerves, uh, it's a, you know, a natural uh, B rep surface in here, uh, which you can do all the good things with like uh, thickening and use for splitting and, and, and referencing and offsetting uh, and, and do whatever else you need to do um, for, for that surface. So, and because it's so nice and smooth, it's very well behaved uh, in situations like this. I'm gonna go around with my space mouse now just to stop the <laughs> the jerky uh the jerky rotations that i was doing before all right so that is just the really really basic of what a constrained surface is um but to move into the scan workflows i'm going to go over to my phone which is connected and let me see if i can log back into it with this fancy mechanism and yeah so i've got onshape open on my phone here and i did a scan earlier um, using a, oh, see, it's interesting here. I can actually, uh, all right, I mean, I'm in the same document. So there, there I am twice. What you can do, and this was new in the previous version of Onshape, is to use your phone's LiDAR scanning so that now we can, instead of just, um, we can import from an environment scan, which we've always been able to do, but now we can do an object scan. And this is using some new Apple technology and new Apple toolkits that have become available to us uh, to do scanning of much smaller objects at a very much higher resolution. It uses a mix of photo, uh, photogrammetry and the LiDAR scanning uh, to do things. So what I did do um, was scan um, my violin, which is sitting right behind me. Um, and I only wanted to scan this top surface here um, rotate around. You can see I wanted to, to characterize the shape of that top surface. Uh, I didn't really care about what was going on underneath. 
And in fact, the scanner uh, software, you know, the scanning uh, function tried to fill in the back, and I don't really care about that. And we'll, we'll get to how I dealt with it in Onshape in a minute. But I did want to show you that it's just so easy. You know, you can come into your iPhone iOS app um, and then say, you know, new scan uh, from object. And it takes you through the whole process of, uh, you know, how many passes you need to do. And, and I actually did this in a really, really rough way, uh, as I said, just to get this one surface. And I did it in pretty poor light. But as you'll see, it's, you know, it's, it's really quite good. Anyway, so let's go and have a look at it in this um, part studio here. And now you can see the scan. Uh, and, you know, if I zoom in here and look at the distance, you know, these are, you know, maybe three millimeters, some of them uh, a little bit shorter. Um, so, you know, between one and a half, two millimeter to three millimeter resolution, which is, uh, which is really good, you know, for something like this, uh, because it's gonna give us ample number of points uh, to do what we need to do. So we could, go back to our constraint surface, and then we could just pick any of these mesh points. And as we did before, you know, as soon as we have three or four or five or six, uh, is we're going to start putting um, surfaces on here. And, uh, and you can see here, that it's, as soon as I start making the sampling wider, you know, the, uh, the surface is going to have to grow. And um, this is a really useful thing that maybe you've got a scan of some portion of a part that you want to avoid or you want to create some geometry for um, maybe to uh, to use as reference. Right? So there's that. Um, and you can see here all the mesh points in here. And I can, again, you know, can control whether I want performance versus uh, smoothness. And we'll get to this setting in a minute. Um, Right, so that's one way of using it, but it's going to be a fairly laborious way to you know, stitch something together in this particular use case that I'm going to show you. Um, you know, the, the manual sampling way is perfectly adequate for, for certain other uh, types of use cases. So what I did is first utilize some of the mixed modeling tools in Onshape, been around for a long time. Um, so what I did is I used a few transform uh, reorientations here uh, to get the mesh uh, in the right place, you know, relative to the orient uh, relative to the origin here. Um, I then did a few split features. So let me open this um, here. Oh, by the way, here's something new as well. So now uh, you can expand all or um, collapse all uh, feature folders. Uh, that's something brand new in this released today as well. So a little bit of an Easter egg there for you. Uh, what I did uh, to get this done um, was to build a, um, a trimming surface like this. And then I just did a regular split function, which is up here. Um, I did a split operation where I split the part. Uh, you can see I did that. And I kept the inside and uh, deleted one extra bit that was hanging around the bottom there. So hiding that surface, now you can see this mesh, um, but it's sort of isolated onto the area that I'm really interested in. Now, because this is actually really, really old violin, there are some bumpy bits on it. Um, and there are some bits that I didn't, uh, I didn't take the chin rest off, for example, when I was looking at the back here. So there's some funny anomalies in, in the mesh. Um, so I just did a little bit more. I did a little slice. Again, I just created a sketch extruded that surface uh, and then split with that surface and then I uh, hid that. So now I've, it doesn't actually really matter if you've got holes in it sometimes and that's not a hole, that's just a reflection. Um, but if you have a partial mesh, that's fine um, because what's coming next, uh, it will take care of that. And what comes next, of course, is the constraint surface. So what you do, again, is you pick the constraint surface, but instead of picking individual locations this time, we're going to go over to this option, which is the mesh option. And I can just give an entire mesh and, you know, do something like that smoothness and, and tolerance. Uh, and it's going to create a best fit surface through all of the points in this mesh. And yeah, there might be 20,000 or something in here. It's not particularly high, but you can see it's really fast, right? Let's have a look. Uh, half a second right to to create this surface and if we want to look at this surface again you can see it's pretty clean you know the the control point grid here is pretty well um, you know distributed and uh, it's going to be a, a perfectly usable surface for trimming offsetting thickening and uh, well let's let's see 
Um, all right, so that's the test one. This is the one I actually did. Um, here it is. And you can see I used the same settings. Um, now, one of the things you can do is turn on a deviation display. Um, so you can have a look at the, all the deviations above a certain amount. So let's go above, say, half a millimeter. And these little red lines showing you where the mesh point uh, and the surface are deviating from each other. And you can see that, especially in some areas, uh, I do here, probably better with the... Yeah, there are some areas like this one, which is a real peak of a mountain. It looks like the scanning picked up something, uh, maybe some dust or some different surface uh, finish there. Um, a couple more there. So the surface that's being created is kind of averaging all that out, but it still is useful to see where those bumpy bits happened. You can see there's a real terrain here, right? Um, anyway, so the deviation display is you know, a part of this feature as well. So we've got this feature now, and I could um, I turn off the mesh. There's, a, there's the surface that created. All right. So you can see it captures that shape really nicely. And this is, you know, from the side view, this is what I was looking to capture. This is a very important shape, as is this shape across the belly here, all right, or across the waist. Um, and typically you, you know, you manually scan these things and you have to do some kind of lofting operation. Um, but we're going to avoid all of that. And you can see how fewer features it really is going to take me uh, to do this. All right. So I have this uh, surface now. I'm going to create a plane down here. And I have this side trimming, remember. So all I'm going to do now is an enclosed feature. And I'll turn off that trimmer and turn off the reference surface. And you know, now I've created a big solid block of wood, very similar to how I would actually have done this in the first place. Um, the, the violin maker would have created, uh, taken a big chunk of wood, split down the middle, of course. Uh, we can do that later. Um, and then started carving out this shape. And we've done that operation really just in one massive uh, scan to CAD um, sort of tour de force right um, here. So that, that's pretty nice. I've just done an inner shell operation down here, including removing the walls of the shell. Uh, you can see in here, I, I shelled everything, including the wall, just leaving that top so that I could have a 2.5 millimeter. Uh, typically, they're between 2.5 and 3.5 millimeters, depending on whether you're talking about the front or the back of the violin. Uh, so 2.5 is good for now. And, and that's pretty much on the way. Now, just for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to mirror this across my plane and then I'm going to offset that surface uh, that we used before and make my side trimmer and I'm going to offset it in by a little bit and you'll see why um, because I'm now I'm going to thicken that which is going to create the ribs um, but I want to do a couple more split operations so splitting trimming you know all those things are very powerful and boolean operations uh, so now I've you know I can peel the top off and you can see that now we've got three parts. Right? I've got the top and the bottom. Oops. Top and the bottom like that. And now I've created the uh, the ribs as well um, here. So, and my, for the last little bit, I'm going to just chop the F holes out. And just so that it looks like um, the violin. Now, if some of you may remember a, a very long and long-winded video that I did um, back here, and this is the, supposed to be the same violin, but I did this one sort of from first principles using uh, normal surfacing techniques. Um, you know, they should look pretty similar, uh, especially on that back there, because this is the actual violin that's um, uh, again sitting right beside me, and it, you know, it's a you know, to get to this point, and for you know, there are reasons why you might have wanted to do it this way. Uh, you, know, you know, with a there's a lot more features in in this one here, um, but for this one here, you know, taking one and a half seconds total regeneration time for this as a very very accurate representation of what's in real life, um, the new constrained feature or constrained surface feature. Uh, is going to be incredibly powerful, incredibly useful for that. And I can't wait to see what other people are going to be doing with it. Um, I can think of many, many use cases uh, beyond uh, antique musical instruments. 
of course. Um, so yeah, that's going to be um, a really, really nice thing. And I'm so happy that we could uh, bring it out today.